When I was a little kid, I always watched TV. Some of my favorite shows were Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry. I watched those a lot on Saturday mornings. Soon in 1999, when I turned 13, a new show was being aired on Cartoon Network. It was called, Barnaby and Pals. Now this seemed pretty interesting, especially to a kid who watches TV all day. There was one thing I didn't understand though, the commercial was dull and boring. There was no narrator, just text, and worst of all, there was no music in the commercial whatsoever. I passed it off as a low-budget commercial for a high-budget show. Then I saw the premiere time. Next Saturday at 10 o'clock p.m. Strange. Right after I saw the commercial, I went upstairs and asked my mom, who was sleeping, if I could watch the show the night it premiered. My mom said yes, but still made me watch it except going to bed after the premiere. I sighed, and agreed. I did a couple of things that week, like watching Godzilla Returns on my parents' old scene within my room. As well as getting ready for school which was coming in about two weeks. Then, finally, Saturday came. At 9.45, I went to my bedroom with some ice cream to watch the premiere of Barnaby and Pals. The clock struck 10 o'clock and the show started. I stared at the TV with glee, thinking that this show would be hilarious. The show stared with a crudely drawn logo, writing Barnaby and Pals, and that was pretty much it. In the background, you heard the slight chimes of bells ringing. There were not even opening credits. I was thinking that was supposed to be that way, and just kept watching. Bad decision. The show started in a dreary wood-like setting. Red fog rolled across the screen. There was a cottage with no doors. All that was there was a window. The camera slowly zoomed into the window, while there was a quiet sobbing in the background. The sobbing only came out of one speaker. All of a sudden, the camera zoomed into the window, faster than the speed of a race car. I saw a figure slouched in the corner, its hands pinned above their head. When I looked closer, I saw a line attached to the slouched shadow. It was a gallow. It was being hung. Then, a horrific bloody face popped up on screen, along with an ear splitting psychotic laugh, then the screen faded to black. There was another scene. It was of deaths, and lost pet signs. Images flashed up on screen of kids, and dogs, with entrails ripped out of their bodies, girls, and cats, pinned down by a dagger, and even a line of parents, and guinea pigs, strewn across some pine trees, with entrails tied together. I swore I had turned green. I ran to the trash can in my room and hurled. I couldn't stop for about two minutes. I felt better after that, and when I turned my attention to the screen again, the horrible images were gone. I sighed and went back to my bed and sat down. Now on the screen was a rope with caution written all over it. Sirens blared, as blood-curdling screams arose in the background, along with horrible cutting and grinding and snapping noises. I was sick just thinking about it. Gunfires also were heard. Then it caught my eye. The house with the crime scene rope looked an awful lot like my house. I was scared. I would gladly admit it too. Then, a gross, and I mean gross, picture of the crime scene. It was blood covered. It took place in a wooded area as well. I saw too much in that picture. Just thinking about it makes me sick. I shall not mention the contents on the image, but I can give you this, it was pretty gruesome. I closed my eyes until a loud squeal came from my TV. I opened my eyes and I could not believe what I saw. It was my mother's head, decapitated and rotting by the second, hanging by a rope with a large ratchet going through it. Blood was dripping down her eyeballs. I screamed for her. She wouldn't answer. I was sobbing at this point. I had to watch on to see what happened next. The screen went to static. The image started blurring. The screen had something black flashing on it. I thought it was words. Then the screen went black. It stayed like that for about 5 to 6 minutes. Then an actual video was shown. It showed what resembled that orange thing in the new 2011 show, The Amazing World of Gumball. You know, the one who has the huge nose and orange fur. Anyway, there was a name tag on the side of him. And it read, Barnaby. That was Barnaby. It seemed pretty strange for a cartoon character. And the CGI was even good. It didn't look like primitive 90s CGI. It looked exactly like modern day animation. He was walking with a demented scowl on his face. He was holding something. A machete. It was soaked in blood, as well as he was. He looked directly at the TV screen for about five minutes, then started to head towards the screen. I got back as far as I could and covered up well. Right when he was about ready to walk into the screen, the TV switched to static again. I breathed heavily. I felt like I was going to heave again, when the TV went to a photo of some tombstones. There were bodies pinned to them. The photographer's shadow could be seen. 
It read several different names. One seemed familiar. Alec McClanny. A name that struck me. A name was one of my schoolmates' names. I almost fainted. It was too realistic to be fake. The camera stopped on his grave and zoomed it on it. I again covered my eyes, as the screen had emitted horrible screeching noises. I opened up my eyes, the screen was static, showing little images of something. Then, the sounds went off, the flashing stopped, and a message showed up on screen. You can't undo what has just occurred, Frederick KKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKKK